information and surprisal. So information is related to probability. Uh, it's a measure of how surprised we are to see an outcome in some sense. But information in particular is going to tell us about patterns. So what is information? Well, very simply, information is what we can encode with an alphabet. Words are comprised of letters. However, to be communication, we'll also have to include spaces and punctuation. And so we tend to talk about messages. So, hello world is a message with 12 letters. We can change to different alphabets. The simplest alphabet is just the binary alphabet, 1, 0. And we can represent messages as binary strings. So, for instance, we can use what's called Unicode, which means uh, that each letter has a binary, a string of ones and zeros, representation. So the word independence can be written as a binary string in Unicode in the way that you see there. Those groups of ones and zeros define those letters. Now we're going to focus on the binary alphabet in which each letter is what's known as a bit. And in the word independence in Unicode, binary, is given by that, and that's uh, 84 bits long. Uh, let's note that the, the choice of units, bits, is arbitrary. We could have used nats or vars, and so the units we use is a matter of preference. It's just, uh, just like the choice between inches or centimeters. Now the information in a message is going to be defined to be the length of its shortest possible binary representation. And of course notice here the units we're using are bits. So the, there's an idea called zipping a file and the idea is that if you zip then what you've zipped is the, the zipped version is smaller than the non-zipped version. So we had this 84-bit uh, representation of the word independence, just writing uh, the binary string down for each letter. But if we were to zip that, it actually would be shorter and still represent the same idea. So the zipped version is 70 bits long, and it takes advantage of the fact that the EN and the DE are repeated in the word independence. So that means the amount of information in the message independence is no more than 70 bits. Could be less, but we now know it can be no more than 70 bits. So let's make this as definition. The amount of information in a message is equal to the fewest number of bits that can be used to encode the message as a binary string. Now self-information, or surprisal, is the information or surprisal for an outcome. If X is associated with a sample space S, then we'd write information in one of these ways. Uh, the information from X being the outcome O sub X, or the uh, corresponding to the index X, or a lot of times we just write I of X. And the key here is that the self-information is the length of the shortest binary string that can represent all the outcomes that are in S that are associated with the variable X. So how do we quantify self-information? Well, we find the binary string that can represent all the outcomes in S. We're going to start out, however, with very simple processes. In particular, they'll have all outcomes being equally likely and the number of outcomes will be a power of 2. And the method we're going to use to do this encoding to find the information is going to be a tree. In particular, a decision tree. So a decision tree is where you have a condition on your variable and the node is then a decision and then you have two edges, one for true and the other for false, which we label accordingly. And then we can follow down the tree using the true and falses for the conditions and that gives us a binary representation of our uh, outcome. So this path would be 101, the binary string that we get by going through those decisions. 
we have to encode all the outcomes, however. So it's not enough to just encode one outcome. We have to have an encoding that can include all the outcomes in order for it to be defined as information. So let's look at surprisal or self-information. And let's look at a spinner with four equally likely outcomes. And remember, x is going to be associated with the variable s. And so our first decision is whether x is greater than 1. And that's either true or false. Then we'll have x greater than 0. That's either true or false. And x greater than 2. That's either true or false. And notice that the false false condition is 0 and less than 1 and greater than 0 would be 1 and greater than 1 but less than 2 less than or equal to 2 would be 2 and greater than 1 and greater than 2 would be 3 and notice we have x equals zeros encoded as 0 0 and 1 is the 0 1 and 2 is the 1 0 and 3 is the 1 1 that's just the the binary representation of those numbers. What this means is we need two bits of information in each outcome of a spinner with four equally likely outcomes. So the self-information for zero is two bits and likewise with each of these the information is two bits. Let's look at an eight-sided die. So here we have x greater than three, true or false, x greater than 1, x greater than 5, true or false. And there are 8 outcomes, starting with the outcome 0. And notice that we have paths through the decision tree corresponding to each outcome. So there are 3 bits of information for each outcome of an 8-sided die. 2 is encoded 0, 1, 0, and 7 encodes as 1, 1, 1. Now let's look at the relationship between information and probability. If there are two to the b equally likely outcomes, that means our capital M is some power of two, then we have S is the set of outcomes indexed by one up through M. So each outcome has a shortest encoding of B1 up to B sub B, or each B sub J is a binary digit, either a zero or a one. So the self-information when we have two to the b likely outcomes is just little b or equivalently the self-information from x is b. The probability of O of x is 1 over m if they're all equally likely and that's 1 over 2 to the b or 2 to the negative b. So therefore the probability is 2 to the negative of the information. So if there are two to the b equally likely outcomes, then the self-information of x is the negative base 2 logarithm of the probability p. Now the same approach works if there are a to the k equally likely outcomes for any positive integers a and k. Uh, we can just use a, an alphabet with a letters instead of the binary alphabet. And I'm going to show you an example using a ternary alphabet. And our units now are going to be trits. So there's three letters. So if we have a spinner with three equally likely outcomes, then our alphabet is minus bar plus. And this comes from trinary comparison. A trinary digit is a trit. And so if we take x compared to 1, then the minus bar plus corresponds to the 0, 1, 2. And therefore, each outcome can be encoded with one trit, one letter, and therefore the self-information is the log base 3 of 3, and that's one trit. Now suppose you had a spinner with nine equally likely outcomes, then if B is an interval, uh, such as everything from 1 to 7, including 1 and 7, or 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 11, or the set 3, 4, 5, then A compared to B is minus, if A is below the interval, 
and bar if a is in the interval and plus if a is above the interval. So let's take a look at encoding. So first we do x compared to 3, 4, 5. Below is minus, within is bar, and above is plus. Then we do these comparisons. Notice we now have all nine outcomes and it corresponds to two trits. For instance, x equals 3 is encoded as bar minus, x equals 7 is encoded as plus bar, and x equals 8 is plus plus. So each outcome is two trits. Or self-information is the log base 3 of 9, which is two trits. So if there are m equal 3 to the k equally likely outcomes, then we can actually convert this to binary bits. We simply use this identity, the log base 3 of k is the log base 2 of k over the log base 2 of 3, and therefore one trit has to be the log base 2 of 3 bits. So if you have x outcomes associated with a set of three equally likely outcomes, then the self-information is the negative log base 2 of 3. Uh, sorry, there should be, shouldn't be a negative there, just the log base 2 of 3 bits. Now, if each value of x has a probability of 1 third, then the self-information is the negative log base 2 of the probability, just like we see saw before. So self-information in general, if x is associated with a set of m equally likely outcomes, then the self-information is the log base 2 of m. The probability is 1 over m, and therefore the probability is 2 to the negative self-information, or the self-information is the negative log base 2 of the probability in units of bits. This isn't really a proof, and of course we're only looking at equally likely outcomes, but it does in general turn out to be true. Suppose we have now processes with more than one variable. So our sample space is now doubly indexed. X will go from 1 up to M sub X, Y from 1 up to M sub Y. And now the self-information uh, from x and y taking on values, little x, little y, is the self-information of this outcome, O sub x, y. And our notation here is that the self-information can be written as a function, like the self-information of x, comma, y. So let's look at self-information of a single outcome. So we have a toss of a fair coin as heads or tails one bit of information for each outcome. All we need is a single binary digit. If we toss two fair coins, that's me and you, and we'll look at whether or not I got a heads, and then we'll look at whether or not Dr. U got a heads, and that encodes everything, and so there's two bits of information in each outcome, the simultaneous toss of two fair coins. So I of 0, 0 is 2, and likewise I of all the binary strings are, is 2. Now let's talk about dependence and independence. Remember, me and you are on opposite sides of the Earth. So therefore, the outcome of my coin does not depend on the outcome of U's coin. We'll say X and Y are independent variables. They take on their values independent of one another. But you see, if you and I were at the same place and we both taped our coins to opposite ends of a ruler, then the outcome of use coin would be dependent on the outcome of my coin. As a matter of fact, heads for me would imply heads for you. So when we want to think about x and y being independent variables, independent of each other, then we can, uh, without issue, just imagine that they are associated with processes that are taking place on opposite sides of the earth. Let's suppose we did that, and let's suppose that for x, all the outcomes could be encoded as b1 up to bm, and for y, they could be encoded as beta1 up to beta n. 
what would be the shortest possible encoding for the two that occur simultaneously? Well, the best we could do is the concatenation because they're independent. The B's can change independently of the betas. So therefore, the very best we could do is to stick the two together. But if the self-information of X is M bits and self-information of Y is N bits, then B1 to BM concatenated with beta 1 to beta N is M plus N bits. And therefore, I of XY is the sum of the two self-informations. And so therefore, we have a theorem information from independent variables, the self-information from simultaneous outcomes of independent variables x and y is the sum of the self-information from x and y respectively. So the key here is that x and y have to be independent. For example, me and you certainly have independent coins. My probability of heads is a half and that's one bit use probability of getting heads is a half and that's one bit. The probability that we both get a heads is one fourth and that's two bits and one plus one is two. So self-information to summarize if x and y are independent variables then the joint uh, information is equal to the sum of the information uh, we can also show the other way that if this uh, summation law is satisfied for all uh, possible values little x y then x and y are independent and also we've shown that if they're m equally likely outcomes and p of x is 1 over m then the self-information is the negative log base 2 of the probability.